Hi. So what's happening, everyone? Well, it's fucking tough. <laughs> yeah, things are tough um, in the business world at the moment. There is not much work going on. Um, so some, mean, some you know, refer to the supply chain issues, la di da. But the thing is that all the distribution, like the manufacturing and production cycles had been put on hold for many, many months, right? So now they just slowly, slowly re, um, re, re, restarting. But it means that all, you know, the advisors and um, uh, uh, basically all the, uh, the economy is just going back into, into swing. Um, while, of course, the governments, which are super indebted, um, have stopped all the grants and uh, furlough schemes and stuff like that. So it means that um, there is a gap between the moment where all these subsidies and help and stuff and grants have stopped and the moment where you can actually make a living, uh, which is probably six or seven months down the line, because at the moment distribution cycle is slowly restarting. So it's an absolute disaster. And uh, probably I think that things are still going to be very slow and difficult up until mid-2022. I mean, I really hope for the best and that things are going to get back into, uh, sw into full swing way before, but it's not looking great, is it? Um, also, there is definitely a battle of power at the moment, like a power struggle going on with all these fucking stupid governments and institutions which think that they have the upper end and that they can dictate um, the way people should leave and how to leave, um, you know, on and on as if they were uh, a uh, total um, autocratic organization. And that is just not working at all. Um, and it, uh, it never worked, but at least before during the pandemic, there was the uh, rationale, there was the justification that everybody had to uh, have his or her decks in a row because, you know, otherwise they could get infected with COVID. So therefore curfew at, you know, 6 p.m. and, uh, and um, having to wear masks in the street, etc., etc. But the problem is that the penny has not dropped and governments and institutions um, around the world still think that they can actually, dict you know, have this sort of dictator, dictat dictatorial, dictatorial dictatorship go going on um, well, there's no more justification for health and, and, you know, and safety reasons. And moreover, as I'm sure you know, there are lots of um, uh, basically scandals breaking out, such as the scandal on the Pandora Papers, which show that, you know, some massive law firms and um, accountancy firms and, uh, and the tax havens are making an absolute fortune and industry out of this um, you know, money laundering and um, a, a, a stashing money in tax havens uh, business. And, um, and also there are scandals in the church, in the Catholic church, for example, in France, uh, but also, you know, in the governments in the UK, we, where we've learned that there are many donors. I mean, this was so, I mean, this was so obvious. But there are so many novels of, a of the Tory party, of a con conservative party, uh, who are actually um, money launderers and um, um, uh, tax evad evaders. So, um, so basically, there aren't any justifications for these fucking governments and uh, institutions and, uh, and powers to, uh, in, in place to actually have any any gravitas and any um, uh, any reason to uh, dictate their own will on uh, on the people because not only is it no longer justified uh, for health and safety reasons but also um, if they don't have any credibility right they just uh, they just uh, uh, created and sustained a system whereby uh, there's a lot of perversion there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of um, people who are perverted and um, and dishonest and who benefit from the system uh, to the tilt and, um, and uh, don't, uh, are never being held accountable for this. Or at least it's very difficult to make them accountable. And this, is, this means that the people is getting more and more annoyed, more and more aggravated by all these um, 
uh, um, injustices which uh, which are around them, and um, and I think that some change is needed. So, so um, to actually uh, purify the system, n clean it, and um, yeah, there needs to be a purge. There needs to be a purge. There needs to be a change of uh, paradigm in terms of how the system is uh, is set up in place. Uh, who, who, uh, who who takes decisions? How decisions are taken? And I, I don't know yet what's going to come out of that. But what I know is that the current systems are not working. Um, the UK, if, if if we let the UK and the Tories have their way, you know, this is definitely going to become a tax haven. I mean, it's, it's already, you know, most of the P P Pandora Papers uh, revelations show that actually London. And some other places in the UK are basically where all the tax evaders put their money, right? Because they want to invest in the real estate and have lots of real estate in uh, in the UK. Uh, there's also in France, in Paris, in particular, on the French Riviera. But the UK is just, you know, plush with flush with uh, with tax evaders uh, who own the biggest properties in, uh, in on the land. Uh, you know, in free, uh, the freeholds of, in uh, in uh, in London, in particular. So. The point I'm trying to come, to come across is that I know people are dissatisfied and I know in particular myself, I am. I am because I just, uh, this pressure from the systems, the, the, the powers in place which, have re we are, which are so behind the times, which uh, do not understand what is at stake now and just are basically um, having this autocratic attitude just to uh, impress upon everyone, including me, that they are, uh, they are basically um, at the top of a tree and you have to do what they say, you know, like a, 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 a sort of top-down approach. The, and, and they just don't understand that this is over. You, you, can't, you can't rule like that. You can't manage like this anymore. And you are accountable. And they don't want to be held accountable. So I think that a lot of people, including myself, are getting extremely pissed off with the status quo at, quo at the moment and want some change. So I don't know how and how to, how to make this work better, but I know this, this is not working anymore. This, this system is not working. I mean, you want an example? I'm going to give you an example. For the last uh, two years, um, I had claims after claims after complaints from the Paris bar uh, of the uh, Ordre des Avocats de Paris against myself and against our law firm um, for, for complete, uh, for, for reasons which were, uh, which were nothing. Every time it's based on nothing, it's just to, you know, to stunt us, to stop us, to, to, um, to, um, to, to put us down, to set us up. Literally, we've been set up. Um, in particular, during the month of um, the, the months of uh, from January up until uh, May 2021, um, I was unable to come back to France. Yes, from London, from our uh, office, office in London, um, our crew of the office in London, because uh, because of the lockdowns, and it wasn't possible um, to um, for for health and safety reasons, it wasn't possible to travel. Um, Except if you had a um, a reason which was extremely urgent and, and serious, such as you know a death or a, a, a very serious illness, etc. But I didn't have all that stuff, um, and also I needed to have a, um, a negative po uh, COVID test, obviously, to to uh, to travel, and I couldn't get a negative uh, a COVID test for reasons I'm not going to get into, but I couldn't get it, so I could not travel. And during this time, the Paris bar, and in particular the Batonnier uh, 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 Olivier Cui, who is, is a competitor, is an entertainment lawyer, and he works as a partner in the law firm where I used to work when I was a French lawyer, which is Gilles Lorette Noël. Uh, when I left Gilles Lorette Noël uh, in 2003, I didn't leave in good terms. Okay, so I had some, uh, you know, uh, clear and, and, and in uh, no uncertain terms, uh, let them know that they uh, they. Um, attitude was disastrous, the way they treated their, uh, their uh, associates was disastrous and I told them in no uncertain terms what I thought of them. Okay, so the departure back in 2003 was, uh, was not uh, amicable. 
Uh, but we settled it though. So, um, but it was not amicable, the parting. Anyway, so this guy who is a partner in this law firm, Gilles Noiret Noël, and who is a competitor because he works a lot in intellectual property and in entertainment. Um, he's only a French lawyer. I'm, I'm, I'm dual qualified. I'm a French lawyer with a Paris bar, like he is, Krukuzi. And I'm also a solicitor of England and Wales. And this guy who's been the batonnier, so the sort of head of the, uh, of the, uh, the lawyers from the Paris bar uh, for the last two years, up until uh, the 31st of December 2021, He's been doing my head in constantly, him and his team of crazy bastards from the Paris Bar who have nothing else to do because, of course, we're in a pandemic, so they don't have any work. So what do they do? Well, they try to piece off their competitors, you know, that they want to get down. So in the last two years, we had claims after claims and, uh, you know, and ethical claims and, and, um, and, 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 and um, now they want to do a tax control and why they want to, like, that, that the uh, equivalent of the HMRC, the, the tax and French tax administration wants to have a tax control on Crefovi, that I can understand. And in fact, we had one back in 2000, um, uh, I think it was 2016, 2017, which went on perfectly well. Everything was fine. Uh, they told us we were doing everything by the book. So that was great. We had a, a tax control by the French tax administration. That I can understand. But that the French bar is asking us for a tax and uh, like a tax control uh, and, uh, and, uh, and control of our, all our books and all our ledgers. What the fuck? And so this is what we have to contend with at the moment. I mean, I'm also a, mem uh, a, a, a member of the uh, Solicitors Regulation Authority in England and Wales, because as I said, I'm a solicitor of England and Wales. Are they cool? I mean, they don't... They leave, me, they leave us do our work and they let us work and they're just not, you know, um, crazy bastards like this. But in France, in particular with Paris Bar, I mean, I am on the verge of actually filing a, crimi a penal claim, a criminal cl claim for discrimination, harassment, um, uh, libel uh, against the Paris Bar, Olivier Cousy and his, and his, his, uh, his uh, team of, uh, of cronies and, um, and minions because this is becoming unbearable. How can we work when you've got these crazy people always on your back and uh, always, you know, filing claim after claim and trying to basically stop you from working, right? And it's just unbelievable, this discrimination, you know, as a, um, as a, as a woman in the uh, legal uh, industry, in the French uh, lawyer industry, as a business lawyer and, uh, and a, a, a high profile litigator, which I am, I, this discrimination is un just unacceptable. So anyway, this is an example of what we have to contend with, with the powers in place at the moment, who have no justification of being, because frankly, um, a lot of lawyers <laughs> with a Paris bar are. Oh. I mean, I wouldn't say that they are crooks, but there are definitely some crooks. Like for example, the uh, French Ministry of Justice, um, Eric dupont moretti has been indicted um, just before the holiday in June, June, July, sorry, 2021, by the, um, the French judges because he's got lots of conflicts of interest. And as soon as he was in, uh, elected to the post of, uh, of um, Ministre de la Justice, so Justice Minister, he started to go after all the uh, judges who, during his time as a, as a lawyer, um, would, were, you know, um, creating problems with him in the, in the various um, legal cases. That he was uh, that he was working on. I mean, this is a, like a massive conflict of interest, right? If you are pursuing the individuals who pissed you off in your previous career uh, as a lawyer, when you become a, 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 a mini, a, mini, the Ministry of Justice, the Minister of Justice. So there's, as I said, lots of conflict of interest, lots of things which are not said, a lot of power struggle going on at the moment, a lot of injustice going on, and I'm not going to you know I'm not going to take it anymore this is it I warned them twice already that I will file a criminal complaint um, criminal complaints actually against the, the Paris bar and against this uh, this uh, this um, this team of crazy crazy bastards and I'm going to do it so and that and also you have to you know do some marketing you have to manage your law firm um, it's it's heavy it's really heavy and um, but it is what it is. You have to do what you have to do. So I know that probably in your own life, you have some struggles like this at the moment. Things are tough as well. 
um, I've just given you a personal example, but I'm sure you can relate to what I said. And I'm sure you know that there are issues um, and, and things that you find unjust um, and which have been going on for too long. So I wish you the best to actually resolve these issues. And I think these months of um, October, November, December are going to be the moments where you actually really do need to face these issues and try as much as possible uh, to resolve them. Because enough is enough. And each one of us is um, basically has to actually do something about it. It's not no longer the time to actually bury your head in, your, in the sand. I mean, I've never had this attitude myself anyway. I never bury my head in the sand. If anything, I'm too hyper-realistic. Oh, I'm being <laughs> eaten by a <your> dog. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... Um, but so I wish you the best because it's it's tough times. I don't know where we're going through this, you know, tough grinding karma. I have no fucking clue why I'm going through such tough grinding karma myself. I mean, I'm speaking to all my girlfriends, you know, around me, and they're like, "Oh yeah, life is nice." So they are either unemployed or they work for the public sector, which of course helps. But <laughs> you don't have any fucking karma if you do these sort of things. Um, no, I'm I'm joking. But what I mean is that basically you take less risk than an entrepreneur, a lawyer like myself. But I'm like, why the fuck am I getting all this karma? Why, why, why life is so tough for me? While all these, you know, girlfriends are having, you know, uh, they have a, um, they sugar daddies looking after them, the nanny states looking after them. What the fuck? Why is it so tough, you know, to be a, um, um, an, an entrepreneur who is, uh, who is thorough and rigorous, and um, and a lawyer who wants to get results? Why is it so hard? Uh, <laughs> Why am I ruffling so many feathers by being a, a, an honest, hardworking and, um, and rigorous lawyer? It's incredible. It shouldn't be like this. Anyway, I'm going to immigrate to America, where I think in the US, where I think they, they, they are looking for this kind of, the kind of types like me. Um, in fact, in due course, I will uh, take the, the California bar, which I want to prepare and, and stuff. So, as I've always said, I want to open a third office in Los Angeles in due course, um, but, um, and I think this is going to be a good fit for me because frankly, I can't stand France. I've never st stood France. I mean, most of my time, as I'm sure you know, I spend in the UK, in London anyway, because, uh, you know, there they just leave me be. They just let me be what, what I am and, uh, and and let me be free of, free to do what I have to do, which is most of the time work, but, you know, let, let me have my own initiative and do my stuff. In France, it's impossible. This fucking country is just, um, it's just um, neutering me every time I come here and I can't stand it. Anyway, um, and it, 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 it's tough because I've been grounded in France for the last three months and a half, so I can feel this, this sort of prison feeling even more because because I have to stay grounded in Nice, um, in nice at the moment to resolve some, um, uh, some issues in my, um, in my property there, in my flat. I mean, hopefully they're going to be resolved in due course, but um, it's, it's tough to stay in France for three, three, four months for me. I mean, it's just not tough, actually, it's unbearable. Uh, so hopefully I'll be back to London after the, uh, the shit has hit the fan, as we say, in, um, in October, November. Um, and I really look forward to that time when I can go back home to, uh, to uh, St. John's Wood in London. But yeah, in the meantime, hang in there, work hard, bite the bullet, and just fucking, you know, as they say. Oh, what's the expression again? I can't, I think it's chill and. Uh, I can't remember the impression, but you basically just bite the bullet, do the work, be in the process, manage the process, because that's all you have control on, the process, making sure that, you know, the process is done well, uh, you manage the legal cases well, and etc. This is what you have control on. You don't have any control on the outcome, but making sure that, you know, you, uh, you manage your process and you prepare your case as much and, and as well as possible is the best you can do. And so that is what I'm going to do and bite the bullet and do all these things um, with a lot of courage, a lot of energy, a lot of focus for the next uh, month and a half. And I urge you to do the same because it's going to get tough, uh, tougher even. Okay, bye guys.